Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver and my guests today are Mark Facciotti and Stephen Lucero of UC Davis. Mark is Associate Professor of Biomedical Engineering. He's also the co-director of the Team Lab and a researcher of, uh, in the Genome Center. And Stephen is a development engineer in the Department of My Biomedical Engineering and the manager of the Team Lab. Correct. Welcome, gentlemen. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, spending a little time with us. The title or the topic today is 3D bioprinting. Gosh. It's exciting. <laughs> Very yeah. exciting. So I'm going to start with the central question and I'll start with Stephen. Sure. What is, before we go to bioprinting, let's talk about 3D printing. Sure. Could you tell us in just a few words uh, to people who don't know anything about it, including me? Absolutely. Yes. So 3D printing is basically just another mechanism by which we manufacture things. Okay. So traditionally, when we talk about making things, we typically start with um, a block of material mm -hmm. and subtract material until we end up with the geometry that we want. But 3D printing is, is kind of the opposite of that. Okay. So you start with um, bays or banks of material, and you deposit them typically in layers um, until you end up with the geometry that you want. A, an example of a material that you use in your lab. So uh, the most common of which would just be some type of plastic. Mm -hmm. um, so many of the, the kind of printers that are becoming more consumer grade and available to a wide range of people work with plastics. Um, without getting too specific, mm -hmm. uh, they typically use a polymer called PLA um, or mm -hmm. ABS. Mm -hmm. So, those are so when you examples. say layers, it's sort of like a sewing machine? It goes it back and It could be thought forth. of like that. Um, so <laughs> typically you would take a three-dimensional object yes. and break it up into a series of stacked two-dimensional layers hmm. and um, deposit those one by one until you end up with a three-dimensional object. Well, would be, would be um, an analogy, would be a good analogy to say like a CAT scan? Um, actually, yeah, that's, that's not too mm -hmm. far off. Mm -hmm. um, so CT um, imaging typically works in layers as in well. In layers as well. Right, and mm -hmm. actually we often utilize uh, medical imaging data in 3D printing, um, especially in the lab that, yes. that I work in. And we're going to talk about your lab and Great. the projects. That's wonderful. Now, Mark, yes. what is 3D bioprinting? Well, if 3D printing is like taking an image that you have in your computer and making a real object out of it, mm -hmm. whether, whether it's plastic or some other material, that object is usually dead. It's non-living. Yes. 3D bioprinting is basically doing the same thing, but printing something that has living parts, that's living, right? So, Like what? Like, uh, I mean, the, the, our fantasy is to be able to print organs, for instance. Yeah. If you have a diseased organ, you would love to be able to have a picture of what a, a, a replacement would be like and be able to, to print out a, a new organ using somebody's own cells. That would be the ultimate uh, um, kind of application. And we're going to talk a little more about yeah. this, but it's a fascinating, and of course it leads to a lot of... Uh, uh, science fiction yes, uh, yeah. interpretation of this. Yeah. But, but, but that is uh, uh, coming, isn't it? That's coming, yeah. And I understand that you do uh, do a little bit of bio uh, printing uh, in your lab. So we, we are starting now. The technology is very, very new. Mm -hmm. it, uh, because of the materials are, are more delicate than the plastics, so mm -hmm. there's a lot and sometimes you have to mix multiple materials. It's a little more complicated than, uh, than the traditional 3D printing. So it's a brand new technology, and we're just starting now with a couple of projects where we're going to plant, uh, print plant cells in, in, in certain shapes with a collaborator on Fascinating. campus. Fascinating, yes. Uh, she's got some, some really cool ideas. You should have her on and, and talk about that when, uh, I, when that project I comes will. out. I will. I'm going to. And then um, I'm, I'm hoping to have some students print some gels with bacteria in them that produce cellulose. And so we can make custom-made cellulose sheets 
uh, from these biocellulose sheets. And these, uh, they're the, the, what we envision is something like a custom uh, wound uh, dressing. Oh. That you might be able to take a scan of some, some area that needs a dressing and print basically a custom wound dressing that's made out of biological and material. And I believe that we have some uh, images uh, here, uh, first of all, of your lab. Uh, and by the way, a TEAM, I believe, is an acronym for? Translating Engineering Advances to Medicine. Say it again. Translating Engineering Advances to Medicine. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. You passed the test. I passed the test. So, <laughs> let's, uh, so this is the first uh, image that we have here. And this is an image uh, of your lab. Correct. Uh, yes. So what we're looking at here is um, it's just one of the three hubs of this, this facility. I see. Um, so in this space, we typically do a lot of 3D printing, but also um, CAD development. Mm -hmm. So before we can feed the, the printer an object to print, we first need to develop that object. Mm -hmm. um, so those types of activities take place oh, in right. this Area. And this is a very mysterious object. So, Mark or Stephen, tell us what it is. Good luck, Mark. Stephen built this, so I, I'm <laughs> going to leave it up to him. Yeah. So, um, this is just an example object of something that can be manufactured within the team facility. Um, so, this this is somewhat related to bioprinting, um, but this is more along the mechanical side mm -hmm. of 3D printing. And this is just a a medical device. So, so this is a prototype Correct. that is going to be bio manufactured, manufactured or, or uh, 3D printed? It will be eventually mass produced. Mm -hmm. um, I see. But this one was printed. It is a medical yeah. device. It was printed. Now this, um, uh, obviously these two uh, individuals are not you. Uh, That's correct. But what are they doing? Let's keep them anonymous, but no. uh, what are they doing? We didn't have any releases for them. <laughs> no, we don't. So, so in this case, uh, these are students who are actively working within the lab. Um, specifically, they're working on their senior design project. Um, so we opened the team lab for use by our students. Yes. Um, and in this case, they're actually working on a circuit board that they developed. I um, see. In, that will be contained within a 3D printed housing and a couple other little bits and pieces that were laser cut. Yes, and this uh, this is uh, also very mysterious, but perhaps, Mark, what you were saying about to repairing wounds. Yeah, so, yes. so this, can you, this can is you not, tell us? Uh, just yeah. to be clear, this is not our work. This is from a, a, a publica uh, recent publication. Yes. This is a, uh, a piece of uh, 3D printed cartilage. Oh, and I so see. And so the researchers in this uh, particular study were trying to figure out how how to print uh, replacement cartilage. And so they printed this material that's kind of gooey, just like cartilage mm -hmm. would be, and it's embedded mm -hmm. with living cells. Oh, and they used a printer that looks a lot like what Stephen uses to print some of the other shapes that you saw in the other images to print this kind of uh, grid pattern that's embedded with cells and that's going to uh, potentially be used for growing new cartilage. But that, that is interesting. So I can tell. Um, that uh, your lab is all set up for the future. Yes. Uh, one thing that I want to mention about your lab is that you also are a service facility. In other words, especially for small businesses or uh, technical companies, you provide uh, expertise and, uh, uh, and also facilities for them to, to do their work. And uh, one other thing I want to mention, uh, we have very little time, unfortunately, but if you go to the website of your lab, uh, you, there is a lot of information about what you do and the people who work and on what they work and your services as well are listed. And one thing that I was very happy about was uh, the video that you have there. It's an excellent introduction to what you do, and yeah. the images are really very nice. Yeah. So there'll be the the website uh, displayed, and uh, if you need, uh, if you have information, uh, I mean, uh, questions. Sure, go straight to the website. It describes yes. all of what we offer, uh, and some contact information to, to find out more. Uh, contact yes. Stephen or myself. Yeah. Yes, and I hope to have you again uh, with uh, more projects. Unfortunately, we have very little time. But in closing, I would like to uh, uh, go into a little bit of science fiction. And I found uh, a mind-boggling video. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, uh, hopefully we'll have a few 
a minute or two to comment on it. Sure. So let's show this video uh, and see what uh, 3D bioprinting may be able to do in the future and uh, something of food for thought uh, yeah. in your lab. Maybe yeah. you can show it to your uh, very imaginative uh, graduate students. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if we can have the video, uh, we can uh, then talk about it. Mm. Okay. Bioprinters will output many types of cells as well as a dissolvable gel to support and protect the cells during printing. Organs will then be built up in a great many layers. Over several hours, a complete replacement kidney, liver, heart or other body part will thereby be created. Replacement organs will be output to individual patient specification. As every body part printed will be created from a culture of a patient's own cells, so the risk of organ transplant rejection should be very low indeed. Some future bioprinters are likely to add cells directly to the human body. Sometime next decade, doctors may therefore be able to scan wounds and spray on layers of cells to very rapidly heal them. One day, keyhole bioprinters may even repair organs inside a patient during an operation. In situ bioprinting could even have cosmetic applications. For example, face printers may be created. These would evaporate existing flesh and simultaneously replace it with new cells. People could therefore download a face scan from the internet and have it applied to themselves. Alternatively, some teenagers may have their own face scanned and then reapplied every few years to achieve apparent perpetual youth. Comments. Quick comments. So that's a pretty optimistic view on the future of bioprinting. Yes. Um, it is somewhat feasible. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe not within our lifetimes. <laughs> It would be a stretch. It it's hard be. to predict how fast it'll go. I think that's that's, true. Uh, like that's a very wise it. comment. It's a, it's a it's a great uh, it's a goal. It's a great goal. And, yes, uh, and yeah. we're not there yet, but you know, you it's a great know. thing to shoot for. Yeah. I particularly like the part where you can store your face when you were a teenager and then <laughs> apply any time. So, so that so would can require you build me a new body, please. <laughs> So that would require some advances in a number of fields. Um, medical imaging would have to get quite a bit better than it currently is. Yes. Um, but also 3D printing would have to advance Yes. as well. So, of course so we'll that may be a ways out. And we yes. could have a long discussion about ethics and, uh, and yes. whether we should be doing There's those that. things too. And, uh, That's true, because there so is an, an ethical and, problem about, right. or question rather. Uh, one thing that uh, you mentioned, Mark, that I liked very much was that, uh, w which was very interesting, was that uh, because you would be building um, organs uh, with the uh, stem cells of the person, yes. it would be very customized, and then and and thus the the rejection rate would be much lower. Isn't exactly, that, that, you, that, you that's exactly that. the hope, right? Is that you you minimize these problems that we have now with kind of transplants and right. even grafts right. where you're getting material from some donor that is not yourself about right. rejection. So that not would... to mention uh, other ethical uh, questions yes. like uh, not using embryos and so on. Exactly. Gentlemen, I am so sorry we are coming, out, uh, coming to the end of this interview. I hope to have you again. Thank you so much for coming Thank you for and having us. for Thank you. taking the time to be on in the studio. Of course. And uh, thank you for watching and from all of us here at Davis Media Access, thank you and see you next time.